Welcome back to the Barbecue Lab. My name is David Gafford, and today we're going to get under the hood of the Z Grill 700 series. The model we're looking at is a 700 2C2E wood fired pellet grill. We'll walk through what it's about, who it's for, and show you all of the test cooks we've done on it coming up. The Z Grill 700 2C2E is a part of our testing for the best pellet grill of 2022 that's coming up here on the channel. If you're interested in seeing five different pellet grills competing against each other to see who's the best, then you wanna make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the notifications turned on so you don't miss the video when it publishes in just a few weeks. But today we're talking about the Z Grill 700 series and it gets that name from having right at 700 square inches of cooking surface available in the grill. Now let's start by walking through the specifications on this unit. The 700 series is 51 inches tall by 48 inches wide and 26 inches deep. Now the main grate measures 26 inches wide by 19 and a half inches deep and it's made of porcelain coated steel. The upper rack measures 26 inches wide by seven and a half inches deep and is also made of porcelain coated steel. There's nine inches of vertical height in the cooking chamber, which is important to know when you're thinking about smoking that Thanksgiving turkey. The grill weighs just over 110 pounds and carries up to 24 pounds of pellets at a time. There's even a window in the pellet hopper so you can see your pellet levels at any point during your cook. Now I like this feature a lot since I'm constantly forgetting to add pellets to my grills before I start a cook. Now the main cooking surface offers 504 square inches of cooking space and the upper rack brings another 193 square inches that totals 697 square inches of cooking space. The digital PID controller is set by a single knob to control temperature and has a range from 180 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Now there's also a smoke setting below 180 and a high setting above 375 that in our testing reached the 500 degree range. Now to talk about assembly on this grill, I wanna introduce you to a friend of the lab named Randy. He came in and helped us assemble some of the units for the best pellet grill tests, and here's what he had to say about assembly. Okay, uh, it just finished assembling this Z grill. Uh, it took about three hours. It wasn't too bad. I'd say it's on a scale one to 10, it's a five right in the middle. Not too hard, not too easy. I recommend lots of light, uh, plenty of space, uh, something to put your knees on to, so you don't scuff them up, but uh, overall not a, not a bad afternoon stuff. Now when it comes to the build quality of this grill, we put it to the test with our digital caliper and came up with a 2.11 millimeter measurement on the thickness of the lid and measured 1.55 millimeters for the thickness on the body. Now there are two locking caster wheels on the grill and two large wheels to make it easy to move around. Now we found if you pick up the grill by the handle and hold the caster wheels off the ground, the large back wheels make it easy to move through grass and softer dirt when needed. Now the controller on the unit is a PID controller, which is a part of the new trend in pellet grills as of late. Controllers used to be timed duty cycle or standard digital controllers, but the PID variety is more efficient in the way it controls temperature. It's predictive, meaning that it won't have such a wide variance in temperatures over time. Now we could shoot a whole video just on controller types and pellet grills, but just know that this model is the PID variety and it's very tight on temperatures and efficiency. Now let's walk through some of the cooks that we did on the Z Grills 700 series. We started off with a low and slow pork shoulder for pulled pork. We seasoned the pork up with a 50-50 mixture of salt and pepper, set the grill to 250 degrees and didn't even open the lid for the first three hours. Now we checked in and spritzed the pork with water to keep it moist and wrapped the pork in aluminum foil when it reached a temperature of 150 degrees internal. Now when it hit 200 degrees, we pulled the shoulder off the grill and let it rest in a dry cooler for a few hours before we took the bone out and pulled the pork for sandwiches. The next cook was a spatchcock chicken with Heath Riles apple barbecue rub. Now we cut out the backbone of the chicken so it would lay flat on the grate and cook evenly. We set the grill to 350 and let it cook for about 90 minutes until we had a nice golden brown color and the breast temped at 160 degrees internal. 
We took it off the grill, covered it with foil to let the carryover temperature get to 165, and served it to the family for dinner. For a true hot and fast test, we set the grill to high to see if we could really grill on this unit like we could on a gas grill. There's no direct access to flame on this grill, but we wanted to see if we could get grill marks on the included grates, as well as the grill grate aluminum raised grate system. We took two boneless chicken thighs, placed one on each grate and set a timer for five minutes. After the timer went off, we flipped the meat over and here's what they both look like. Turns out you can get sear marks on a pellet grill without a flame access door. Now we ran tests on this unit to see how long it would run on an empty hopper that we added exactly four pounds of pellets to. We primed the auger and powered it off once the first pellet hit the burn cup. We reset, powered the grill on to stabilize at 250 and ran this grill for three hours and 39 minutes on four pounds of pellets before it dropped to under 230 degrees and continued to lose heat until we powered it off. Now we also measured the amount of time it took for this grill to go from a cold start to running at 250 degrees. We magnetically attached our Thermoworks big and loud timer to the front where we could see both numbers and it got to 250 degrees in just 11 minutes and 38 seconds. When it comes to warranty, there's a standard three year warranty on this unit and you can find out more details on the Z Grills website. Now let's take a second here and talk about a few of the standout features on this pellet grill when you compare it to the competition. First, I love that there's a way to change the pellet type on this grill. It allows me to change the flavor whenever I want and also drain the pellets whenever I need to. The controller also comes with two probes which is a rarity in the sub $600 price point. Most grills might come with one probe and some don't have any, so I like that two come standard here. It's also important to point out that there's no side shelf on this Z Grills model, so the pellet hopper lid is the primary place to set trays of food or accessories when you're working on the grill. Now in all of our testing, this model had by far the most consistent cooking chamber temperatures throughout each of our cooks. The variance in temperature was generally just plus or minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's tight from what we saw in the other models involved in the test. So overall, what do we think about the Z-Grill 700 2C2E pellet grill? This is a very consistent pellet grill that holds temperature within a very tight range when you're cooking at 250 degrees for smoking or on high for a hot and fast sear. It's a pellet grill that can really both smoke and sear, and it was the most efficient grill in our testing group of five units. A 24 pound hopper means that you can get over 20 hours of cooking at smoking temperatures, so an overnight brisket cook is right in the wheelhouse for this grill. There's not much to argue with in this unit, and in the sub $600 price range, it performs very well against the competition. If you'd like to check the current price and see if there's a sale going on for this grill, check the link below in the description. We keep tabs on the sales going on in the barbecue world, and if there's a sale, our link will direct you to the lowest price that we're aware of for this unit. If outdoor cooking is your thing, please consider subscribing to the channel. We put out about three videos per week on the best in outdoor cooking and outdoor living, and we'd love to have you join us as we review what's too good to pass up and what's just plain pass in outdoor cooking. We're on all of the major social media channels from Instagram and Facebook to Twitter, TikTok, and right here on YouTube, and we'd love to have you join us. We pass on the sales and discounts we know of in the barbecue world, as well as help you feel more confident in your ability to entertain outdoors. Our motto is that life is better together, and we're all about equipping you with the best gear, teaching you winning techniques paired with amazing recipes to make your backyard the only place to be all season. We'd love to have you join us, so hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll be notified when new videos are posted to help you raise your outdoor cooking game. Now also, if you gave us a thumbs up, that sure mean a lot to us. That just helps us find more people just like you who love cooking outdoors. I'm David Gafford from The Barbecue Lab, and I can't wait to see you next time as we dive into what's new in barbecue.